Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote a quick post about how Wi-Fi IDSs are affected by recent changes in Android and iOS that are randomizing MAC addresses. And I used Enzyme, which is an open source uh, Wi-Fi IDS that I kind of like for its uh, neat sort of dashboard and such it presents to show some of the problems that are coming up. As these devices are creating these random MAC addresses, and that of course then triggers some false positives if you're trying to track legit or not legit devices in your environment. And remember, it was about a week or so ago that uh, the PHP Git repository was compromised and the attacker added a couple of uh, malicious commits that intended to inject a backdoor into the Git source code. At the time, the assumption was that this particular server that housed git.php.net was compromised. The repository was moved to GitHub in order to essentially just uh, move away from this possible vulnerable and compromised server. But as so often, well, it looks like uh, whatever you find out in the first 24 hours is often wrong. We now have an update from Nikita at uh, php.net with additional details. They no longer think that the server was compromised. They actually now have some evidence that the attacker did manage to log in using the administrator's username and password. This was initially not clear that it's even possible because commits were supposed to use SSH, but apparently there is still an HTTP path open in order uh, to send commits and that apparently was used uh, by the attacker. Now, what's a little bit odd here is that the attacker used a couple of attempts in order to log in. Now, Nikita here writes that they believe that a database that they call master.php.net was compromised because this ran on a very old system, apparently not even supporting TLS 1.2. But if an attacker has access to the password database, well, uh, the attacker should be able to log in on the first try and not need a couple trials. Also, uh, the passwords in that database were only MD5 hashed. So needless to say that uh, this system has now been rebuilt as well and is running a more modern infrastructure that fixes a lot of these uh, shortcomings. Overall, still uh, not quite happy with uh, sort of the write-up here. Looks like there's still a lot of gaps as to what could have happened. And apparently there aren't a lot of logs here to actually uh, figure out uh, what exactly happened. And late last year, IBM and others uh, released patches for critical vulnerabilities in the Linux Bluetooth stack that became sort of known as bleeding tooth vulnerabilities. At the time, not a ton of detail was released and it's always nice if a researcher gives us some time to actually apply patches before releasing all the little details. There's a total of three different vulnerabilities that together can lead to a full remote code uh, compromise of the system without any user interaction. The blog post goes into all the little details of uh, how uh, these vulnerabilities work and can be exploited, including a proof of concept exploit that uh, will provide a full remote shell on the remote system. The main target here, of course, is mobile devices running Linux uh, that often need to have Bluetooth enabled. 
And just a week after having 500 million Facebook users phone numbers leaked, we now have a similar leak again, 500 million users strong leak that apparently is based around LinkedIn. Now we also got a little bit of an update from Facebook that the leaked data actually wasn't technically sort of hacked. It was really just uh, harvested by accessing publicly accessible data. So essentially users that didn't lock down their profiles. I assume similar things happened uh, with LinkedIn here. There's no password or uh, no uh, credit card details and such, but uh, information you often find publicly accessible in LinkedIn profiles like users name, location, who they work for and the like. The data itself has not been made public. It's sort of for sale now, I believe, and only 2 million records have been made available as a sample. And then we got a couple of vulnerabilities and patches that I don't want to skip. First of all, a VMware release an update for the VMware Carbon Plaque Cloud Workload Appliance. The vulnerability fixed here is a URL handling vulnerability that does allow for authentication bypass if an attacker has access to the administrative interface. And then secondly, we have an update for Cisco's SD-WAN uh, vManage software. And now uh, there are a total of three different vulnerabilities that together could lead to unauthenticated code execution as an administrator. There is uh, one buffer overflow vulnerability and then two privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Patches are of course available. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.